God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm going to share a twofold vision with you that the Lord gave me on September 8th, the morning of September 8th, as I was seeking him and sitting in the stillness with him. He showed me by revelation of the spirit, a closed vision of two very distinct things that he is thinking about and about to do in the earth. And so this is both an encouragement to the righteous, to those who are following the voice of the Lord, and a warning, a sobering warning of coming judgment to those who need to wake up and repent uh, for the time before this judgment is short. And so I'm going to share the two visions. First, I'm going to share the word of judgment. And then I'm going to share what he showed me about his love for you as those are the, that's the order he gave them in. And it is from his love for you that he shares these things. It is because God loves you more passionately and intensely than we can fathom that he gives these warnings of judgment, that he, that he judges the wickedness and the sin in our lives. So the first thing that he showed me, I was sitting beside him in this vision and I saw and I asked him, what are you thinking about, Lord? And I saw that he was grieving. He said, I'm grieving over my people, the ones who have dirty hands. He said, they will be cut off. The grief is over the fact that their hands are dirty and they haven't washed them clean, even though they've been given warning and given multiple uh, calls for repentance, they have dirty hands. And so the Lord said they will be cut off. They will be removed. Their hands will be removed. What do the hands represent? The hands represent our ability to work, to, to do it a task, to set our hand to accomplish something and to be given a task to fulfill it. And so that's a serious grievance that the Lord was showing me. He then proceeded to show me that these individuals also their eyes and their ears will be cut off and removed because in their eyes they have these idols they've kept idols in their eyes they have kept idols before them and continued in their worship of idols that he's warned them about and in their ears they will be the ears will be cut off because they have blocked up their ears from listening to the voice of the Lord in this hour. They have blocked up their ears from listening to truth and the pure revelation of heaven in this hour. And so this was very sobering as the Lord said, their hands, their eyes and their ears will be removed. And what the Lord was showing me is that their the their hands were dirty with sin, their eyes were full of idols, their ears were blocked up and they this was all because they were choosing to be in delusion. They were in agreement with their own delusion. Their delusion that they could continue in their sin, continue in the way that they've always done things and ignore the warnings and the voice of the Lord, ignore the calls to purify their hands and their hearts and to unblock their ears to hear what the Lord has to say. And because of their refusal to do this, it was as if they were holding on to their own delusion. And that delusion, that they, that self-delusion that they were so adamant about holding on to, calling it truth, saying it's okay, that that's actually what would lead to their downfall because they were unwilling to let go of their self-delusion. This delusion is actually something that's throughout a a lot of the church and so because a lot of the church is in this self-delusion it it seems like oh it's normal and those under this delusion would actually uh, have the gall to to say that what the voice of the lord is saying is delusion so usually those who are under their own delusion they will call truth and what god is saying they'll mock it and call that delusion and so the lord showed me that this is an hour that he is going to judge those by cutting off their hands, removing their eyes and their ears because of this willful 
delusion, this unwillingness to heed the voice of the Lord, to listen to the pure truth in this hour. And my encouragement is for those of you who are hearing this and saying, yes, I haven't cleaned my hands. I haven't gotten rid of my sin. I haven't dealt with the idols in my, in my life that I have kept in front of me instead of removing. I haven't unblocked my ears to actually listen to what the Lord is saying. My encouragement to you is to repent and like the psalmist says, to cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, give me clean hands and a pure heart. Give me clean hands and a pure heart. That is, should be the cry of your heart if you are sincere in wanting to follow the Lord. If your repentance is sincere, cry out for clean hands and a pure heart and let the Lord wash you and lead you into that repentance because this is an hour to repent. For I knew from this vision that the judgment of the Lord is coming on those in his church who are who have those dirty hands, who have those blocked up ears and eyes filled with idols. Psalm 24, 3 through 6 says, Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. The Lord shows us that clean hands and a pure heart reflect the life of someone who doesn't have idols or things that keep them from fully following the Lord, from fully surrendering every part of their life to the Lord. There's nothing that they that they worship other than the Lord and their their life is full of truth. They desire truth no matter what that requires of them or what that costs them. They de desire truth. They don't swear falsely. They aren't two-faced. They don't love a little bit of darkness or a little bit of delusion because it keeps them comfortable. No, they are. They do not swear deceitfully. This is the one who can ascend the hill of the Lord. It says he will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob, Selah. And so we pause just as that word Selah means to pause and meditate on asking the Holy Spirit to show us, is there any, is there any area that I have, that I've kept held, holding on to my sin? Are my hands dirty from holding on to that delusion? Have I blocked out the voice of the Lord and what he's saying in the earth right now because I don't want to hear it? Have I not removed idols of people and things and situations have I have I not removed those idols that he's convicted me about this is the hour to repent and to cry out give me clean hands and a pure heart Isaiah said the Lord says and tells Isaiah to go and tell the people this same message in Isaiah 6 1 through 4 he says go say to these people keep listening but do not understand keep looking but do not perceive, make the minds of these people dull, deafen their ears and blind their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their minds, turn back, repent and be healed. So what the Lord is actually saying here is that if, if an individual, if people who, who know him continue in their rebellion, continue to hold on to their sin and ignore his voice, meaning they don't want to hear, they don't want to see, they don't want to have clean hands, then he will give them over to that delusion. And this is a great warning in this hour that those who are choosing, willingly choosing delusion and calling it truth, who are willingly calling what is evil good and good evil and siding with evil, siding with the unjust instead of showing mercy to the, ju to the just and choosing justice, and choosing to stand up for justice, those individuals will actually be given over to their delusion. And so you're, if that's you or somebody that you love, their delusion will actually become more entrenched. They will actually become more deluded. They will become more blind and more unable to hear what God is saying. And so this is a warning to not let that be you or someone you love, to not let that be to let your delusion actually take over where you can't even discern truth anymore. It is an hour to repent. 
a, a Psalm 135, 15 to 19 says, The idols of the nations are silver, silver and gold made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak. They have eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear. Nor is their breath in their mouths. Those who make them will be like them. And so will all who trust in them. All you Israelites praise the Lord. So this verse speaks to the, the vision that the Lord showed me that those who worship idols, who have refused to repent and turn from their wicked ways, turn from their sin, turn from their self-delusion, they will become like the very idols they worship. That's a scary thing because what the Lord shows us is that the idols they worship have no sight, can't hear truth can't work or do anything they have no breath in them and so this is a powerful powerful shaking warning to those especially the lord was speaking of those in his church who are willingly choosing delusion that it is an hour to turn from it because if you do not you will become like the idols you worship you will face that same downfall of inability to have any perception of truth any ability to follow the lord if you continue in your delusion ezekiel 12 2 is, gives the same warning it says son of man you dwell in the midst of a rebellious house who have eyes to see but see not who have ears to hear but hear not for they are a, a rebellious house and the lord continues on to tell ezekiel to be as hard headed as a as as flint to not uh, to become hard headed in righteousness and in his message of truth because he is dealing with a rebellious people, God's people who are choosing rebellion and choosing delusion and calling it truth, holding on to their rebellion. And this is the picture that the Lord showed me in Jeremiah. The prophet says, hear this. O oh, foolish and senseless people who have eyes but see not, who have ears but hear not. The Lord is saying, you have eyes. I gave them to you. Use them to see the truth that is right in front of you, to not turn away from it, to use your ears and hear what the voice of the Lord is saying in this hour and to not close up your ears to it because you don't want to be like how Jesus said when, when Jesus delivered parables and spoke uh, when he was on the earth, he, he spoke in parables and when his disciples asked him why in Matthew 13, he says, I speak in parables because only those who actually hear can understand them. Only those who actually have spiritual true sight to see things as they are will see what these parables mean. Those who don't really want to change, those who don't really want to let go of their idols, their rebellion, their delusion, they won't be able to understand it. And so that is a very distinct group of people. There are those who actually don't want to change, who actually don't want to hear the truth. They actually don't want to pursue truth because it will cost them. And there are those who actually want to understand and see those ones. I hope that I, I pray that I'm describing you. And if that's you, be encouraged because you, like the disciples, will see and understand, will hear and know what the Lord is saying and doing in this hour because you actually have eyes to see and ears to hear. And so that was the first vision the Lord gave me. The second vision that I saw is the Lord showed me a blue flame. And as I saw this blue flame, I asked him, Lord, why are you showing me this? And he said, this is my love for you, this blue flame. And when I thought about it, I remember that blue flame is the hottest flame there is. And the Lord showed me that his love is the most intense, deepest, hottest fire of love that is possible. And that fiery love is what causes him to call us to that plumb line of having clean hands and a pure heart. He wants his people to ascend the hill of the Lord. He wants his people to like Moses to be the one who meets him face to face and gets to know and see the Lord and understand his heart, to know him, to know the revelation of heaven. It is that blue, deep flame of love that calls us to ascend the hill of the Lord. 
but it is also that flame of his love that will not allow sin in his house, that will not allow uh, injustice to continue to oppress the righteous and the wicked to have seats in the high places in his house and those who are righteous to be trampled on. It is that blue flame of love that drives him to call you out, to call you higher, to call you to the narrow path. It is that hot flame of blue love. That is the blue flame is the love of the Lord for you. And I pray that that pierces to your very spirit and soul to know that he loves you like that and to see that picture of a blue flame. When I looked up the blue flame, it says the color blue indicates a temperature even hotter than white. Blue flame usually appear at temperatures between 2,600 and 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And blue flames, the reason that they get are more hot is because they have more oxygen, they have more breath, more life in them, and they get hotter because or because gases burn hotter than organic materials such as wood. And so this speaks to the reality of there is more life, more breath in his love that we experience, a higher reality of, of life, but also it's not made of earthly things. It's not like man's love. And so receive that supernatural, hotter than, than earth love that the Lord has for you. And I want to finish off by reading to you two verses that speak to this type of love that the Lord has over you. I want to speak this over you. This is the love that drives us to repentance. This is the love that drives, pe drives people to lay everything down and ascend the hill of the Lord, to set their hand to the plow and not turn back and follow him. Song of Songs 8.6 says, fasten me upon your heart as a seal of fire forevermore. This living, consuming flame will seal you as my prisoner of love. My love is stronger than the chains of death and the grave, all consuming as the very flashes of fire from the burning heart of God. Another uh, passage is from Deuteronomy 4, 23 to 24. Be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord your God that he made with you. Do not make for yourselves an idol in the form of anything the Lord your God has forbidden. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. His love does not allow us to have adulterous relationships with idols. Anything other than all-out marital, pure covenant love with him is not enough. Anything less is not enough. He d requires a righteous, holy, pure covenant with him because he loves us that much. Somebody that loves you truly will not allow you to have idols and be half in or have an adulterous heart. It will, it will desire a pure love between you and so that is the love of the Lord for you. I want to bless you with that today and speak this word of both warning and call to repentance for some and encouragement and blessing for all to come to the love of the Lord Jesus. And you know if how the Lord wants to speak to you today. I bless you with that in the name of Jesus.